it's good to be back. So last week while I was gone, the Svelte team put out this blog post introducing runes and giving us a preview of the upcoming Svelte 5 release. I'm super hyped for this release. I wish it was out today, but I think they said it'll be later this year. We don't have a release date. I'm going by rote, but could be wrong, but it'll be coming in the future, hopefully soon. And, you know, today I just want to give you some my sort of high level take on this and take a look at some of the stuff and really you know, think about how this is going to change things going forward for Svelte. I think it's going to be very positive, but I'm not going to be going too deep into like the nitty gritty, like the getter setter debate, which this sort of ignited and some of the stuff there. There are already great videos on that, including one from Rich Harris himself. This is an awesome video going into the whole getter setters thing, which sort of became drama on Twitter recently. Um, definitely watch this video to get deeper, a deeper understanding of the sort of philosophy behind a lot of these changes and how all this is going to work. And also, if you just want to see how these things are going to work, Joy of Code has an awesome video about that too. So I really recommend those two videos. I'll make sure to link both of these down below, but you know, I, in this video, I just want to talk about the sort of high level and just kind of talk about, you know, my thoughts on my favorite framework going forward and how it's going to change. So going back to this post, I remember reading this last week. Um, I guess it wasn't a week ago. I mean, yeah, it was last week. So I remember reading this last week and initially, you know, everything seemed fine. Um, this right here, this syntax of just let count equal zero and then on click increment count, whatever, where it just kind of works like vanilla JS, but has this magic reactivity hijacked into it. This is one of the things that all of us really love about Svelte. It's so simple. If you look at that meme, the Svelte meme, where it's like React has all this goofy boilerplate nonsense versus Svelte, it's just a variable and the variable works as you would expect a variable to. They're changing that. They're changing it so that let count equal zero isn't gonna be reactive anymore in Svelte 5. They're replacing this with runes. These runes, as they're calling them, are uh they're not hooks the same way react hooks are they're from a technical level they're not the same so calling them hooks isn't quite right but they feel a lot like hooks and certainly when i read these i got huge hooks vibes i remember going down here and i saw state i'm like holy shit they put use state in svelte which was interesting my gut reaction was like i don't know how i feel about that and then i kept reading and going and then this, this is the sort of store example thing. This is the um, getters and centers drama that's been going on, which I really don't think is that big of a deal. I think the most interesting thing that happened with this is I never actually seen get used as a keyword in JavaScript. Might just be a skill issue and I suck, which fair enough, but I never actually use this because I think I'm, I'm, I'm not a framework author or anything like that so i just write a lot of client side code and use these frameworks and i guess i did more research this is used all the time under the hood and it can do really powerful stuff and it's good to see and it's been good to actually learn what this does and i think it's actually a good thing that svelte is going to be teaching us more about javascript and how these things work with these sort of stores now but you know that was still a kind of a weird thing that came out of it but Getting back to what I was originally going to talk about, scrolling through, doing all this stuff, we have all this, we have Derive, which, you know, is fine, but I really had a negative gut reaction when I saw this dollar effect. I hate use effect with a burning passion. It's a foot gun. I'm stupid. I shoot myself with it all the time. I write a ton of React code and... I do horrible things with use effect for a long time. Every time you created a, like every time I created a user in my app, I would create three instances of that user in Stripe because of use effect, because I'm dumb. Like I don't like use effect. And I had a very, very negative visceral reaction when I saw this coming into Svelte. Now I think their implementation of use effect is a lot better. There is no dependency array. It's a lot smarter and it doesn't have a lot of the same foot guns that react has. But still, it's an adjustment, and it's going to change sort of how all this works. Uh, the other two hooks are derived, which is basically just the dollar sign that we used to have, where you could do, like, um, in this REPL, this is the old Svelte, so if we just did let double equals um, count times two. If we want to make this reactive, we can just do dollar sign that, or, whoops, yeah, my bad. And then that will set this doubled variable to every time count changes, doubled will change. So we could just put up here, we'll just do a span tag and we'll put in our doubled 
So we do this right here and then we'll get a doubled ver version of that. This derived is basically just gonna be that, It's but it's a little bit smarter. And there's some really cool edge cases that it solves. Uh, Joy of Code does a good job of talking about those in here. And they also talk about those in the blog post where if we pass in like a function to our derived, it'll be smart enough to catch all the right things and it can stop us from doing weird foot gunny things like this, where this area will only recompute when width changes instead of when width and height change. So that's a great thing all around. Um, props they added in, which honestly makes a lot more sense than export let whatever. It was kind of weird admittedly and there was some syntactic magic that happened there and i think that that's a criticism i've heard of spell in general is that there's just sort of a lot of magic where like you just say export let data and then that pulls in the data from your uh, server file or from your server action or your server loader whatever you want to call it in your spell kit app that's a little bit weird and obviously if you know that and that makes sense it's great but when you're just getting into it and you're coming from a different framework it can be a little weird and i think that this sort of helps explain things and helps make things a bit more explicit and that's never a bad thing. So those are the four sort of key things that they added into Svelte. They also set it up so that the reactivity under the hood is going to be powered by signals. And again, I'm not the guy to tell you about signals because I'm not a framework author and I haven't written enough solid JS. But what I can tell you from people who are smarter than me is that they are really fast and they are really just generally, it seems like the way every single framework's moving. It effectively allows us to do fine grained reactivity, which means that when we update one value within our within the DOM, we don't have to update the entire thing. Because in React, when you change a state variable, you have to re-render that entire component to update all of that. That's why we have use state. Anytime a state variable updates, we just refresh the whole thing. Versus with signals, we can just update the one thing. So we had 20 DOM elements and we updated the title. We only have to switch out that title because it's smart enough to know where that is because it does a bunch of subscription stuff under the hood. Really cool stuff, but not the point of this video. So signals are coming, which is awesome. That's just gonna make gonna make the fast framework even faster, which is awesome. And then they had this little thing down here of what is sort of leaving the framework. So the key things are we're getting rid of let just automatically being reactive, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, you know, this I don't know, like was it was cool. And it was really nice and there was something really just clean about saying let input value equals empty string and then binding it and then using it and just going off of that. There was something really clean and beautiful about that. But at the same time, this explicit declaration of state and us explicitly saying, hey, these three things are our state variables and this is just going to be a constant that we're using within our component probably makes a lot more sense and is certainly going to make this framework a lot more accessible to those who are coming from other frameworks. If you're a React guy, which is what I used to be, it, there is a bit of a weird learning thing where it's like, oh, you don't have to wrap anything in state. And it's also tricky to know what even is reactive and what isn't versus now it's going to be very explicit. Hey, state is reactive. Uh, export let replace with props, dollar sign colon, pretty much just replaced with the use effect. Again, it's a much, much, not use effect, with the effect. It's not a React style foot gun. It's a lot better. I'll show you how that works in here in the example in a second here. Um, the different behavior between script and module, I've never run into this before. I haven't had any issues with this. But simplicity is almost always a good thing. And I think in this case, it absolutely is. The store parts of the API, which are generally more complicated, I think. I've messed with these and I've used these a bit. Once you get the hang of it, they make a lot of sense and they're really powerful and it's something that I know a lot of people really like. But I think that this new runes model, which something I didn't mention earlier is these runes, we can now use them in JS and TS files. So that means that we don't have to set up these weird writable stores and implement subscription methods and all that stuff. We can just use them anywhere. We can just put our state variable into a function and use it. And that's where that getters and setters drama came from. But all of that seems quite good. And I think it's going to standardize things. And I think it's going to allow the creation of more libraries on top of Svelte. Something like Svelte query could probably be a thing. I know that there is like a Tanstat query for uh, Svelte, but I don't think it's on the same level as React query. And hopefully this will allow that to come. Um, the dollar sign, again, that's gone. Props, again, that's gone. We just switched it out to be a rune. And then the lifecycle functions. This was another one where I was like, eh, I don't know about that. Like, 
I really like on mount. I have been burned too many times by use effect being weird to where having an on mount that I know will just run once when we start our app. I really liked having that, but or run once when we mount our page. I really, really liked having that. But this Svelte effect is a lot cleaner, and I think it works really well. So this shouldn't be a problem. So that's the sort of high level. That's the change in Svelte. And let's take a look at what that actually looks like. So finally, I just want to wrap this up by going over how these runes work in practice and kind of give you some examples and talk through especially how use effect or... <laughs> Not use effect, effect works. I'm going to say that a lot. That's going to be a problem. But how effect works and how all this is going to work in the real world. But before we do that, if you guys aren't already, make sure you subscribe, like the video, do all that stuff. We got a ton more Svelte stuff coming. Very, very close to 10K. Let's try and hit that in the next couple of days. And then hopefully we'll be getting back into Golang pretty soon too. So a lot of exciting stuff coming. Make sure you guys subscribe. I'm back. Should be more consistent, hopefully. And yeah. So this whole little example thing has a bunch of different things, and a lot of moving parts. So I'll just go through it one by one. So starting off at the very, the first thing at the top is we have count and old count. Like I said, in old Svelte, we had, this would be our reactivity. Anytime old count changed, our UI would re-render. But now in the, this new Svelte 5 paradigm with runes, it will not re-render our DOM. So when we change our count variable, we go ahead and we run this. So whenever I click this, our clicks will change, our doubled new will change, but this will not change because this is not a state variable. Whenever I go over here and I click on this, I'm clicking on this over and over and over again, but it's not changing the state because it's not a state variable. And Svelte is really smart now because like I talked about earlier with signals, signals provide us fine grained reactivity. So that means that whenever we update the DOM, we're only updating the parts that we need to update. It's smart enough to know that whenever I change count, the only things that need to change are going to be the doubled because it's attached to this derived and the actual count right here itself. So we can just go ahead right here, we can keep changing this, and it's not going to update this guy. But if we look over here and we show the variables, we hit that console.log, all the way down here at the bottom, our count is 7, which matches up here, but our old count is 11. Because we've been pressing it, and we have been incrementing that variable, you know, right down here. It is just JavaScript, so we are incrementing this old count variable, but it's not going to have any impact on our UI. So... Initially, this could be seen as a downside, but like I said earlier, this is going to make things more explicit. It's very clear looking at a Svelte 5 code base, what will change my UI and what won't. I know that the only things that can update my the DOM are going to be this double changing and this count changing because they're the only things attached to runes, and I think that's a good thing. It'll be obviously an adjustment, but this sort of hijacking of old count could lead to some ambiguity of not knowing exactly what will change the UI when, where, and how, so this should improve things going forward. So this effect is gonna do a bunch of different things. If we start over here at the end, which I think is the easiest thing to do, and work backwards, you're gonna see in the console we have, I am the cleanup, I ran on mount, count changed, and old count changed. So what exactly does all of that mean? So first and foremost, effects are now run on mount, so these are basically, an effect is the new on mount function, and the function returned from an effect is the new on destroyed function. So that's the new whenever we uh, clean there. It's the cleanup function, basically. So what you're seeing here is when I um, like changed when I updated the page or whatever, I hit you hit enter in the REPL and it basically saves it. It's going to run the cleanup function because it's effectively destroying the page and it'll give me I am the cleanup. And then it'll go ahead and actually run the effect itself. So, so it'll say I ran on mount and we'll do all this stuff. So pretty simple stuff. But then there's no dependency array. So in React, we'd have this dependency array where any th time any of the dependencies are updated, it will rerun the use effect. In this case, with effect, it will just run, it'll rerun whenever any of the state variables attached to it changed. So remember, old count is not a state variable, and this very explicit reactivity has some benefits here, where whenever I click on the old one, we're updating the old count value, but it's not going to rerun this use effect because it's not a state variable. But we go ahead over to the state variable itself, and we update that. I hit this button, and it's going to rerun that use effect, so it's going to go ahead and it's going to run the cleanup function, because that's what happens when an effect it's going to go ahead and run the cleanup function, and then it's going to say, I ran on mount, which is the top of that, and then it's going to say the count changed to 1, and the old count changed to 15. 
And that's because remember, old count is changing, but it's not going to cause a rerun of the use effect. So I went ahead and I removed count from here. And you can see that derived is effectively a state variable as well. And this will cause the use effects to rerun as well. So if I go ahead and change my doubled, which will be changed whenever count is changed, we'll get this use effect rerun. So it'll rerun, show us doubled, doubled, et cetera, et cetera. So these effects are basically the replacement for the dollar sign, the replacement for on mount, the replacement for a bunch of other life cycle things. And it'll be an adjustment, but I think it's fine. So that's sort of how effect works. It will, like I said, it's the replacement for life cycle functions. It's will run anytime any of the state variables inside of it change. It's very smart, it's very clean. Uh, I haven't, obviously we've just been using this in Rebels, so like, you know, it hasn't been tested by apps, but I think, I think this is gonna be good. I think this will be a good way of handling effects. Uh, it'll be a good way of handling on mounts when we need to like fetch something on page load, which granted, I don't really even do that all that much in Svelte or if really at all because I use SvelteKit and has a load function. So I just use the load function there. So really, I don't think that this is even gonna be the biggest deal in the world. So that's effect at a high level. We could go even deeper into it, but I think those are the key pieces, the on mount, the on destroy, the cleanup, and this fact that it reruns anytime a state variable inside changes. Overall, I think this is very good. I think it just being smart and knowing that the state variables inside are the things that are the dependencies is good. If we had something like maybe a filter on a form or something, so whenever we toggle a thing in a form, we need to refetch the data from a backend API. Having that just happen whenever that state variable changes is probably going to be really clean. And I think this should be a very nice way of handling things. And I'm very optimistic about how this will work in the real world. Obviously, this is just a REPL and we need to see how all this works. And that goes for the entire new runes pattern. But I think this is a really great step forward for Svelte. I really like all of this and I think this is going to lead to a very bright future. So really the only thing for me now is just when can I use it in my apps? And I will make sure to let you guys know as soon as we can and we will definitely be building something really cool with this. So hope you enjoyed. I will talk to you very, very soon.